Hello and welcome to TVP World. I'm Anna Boinska. A director, libertist and playwright, Christian Lada works with the best opera theatres in Europe and consistently strives to push the boundaries of the operatic arts. He blends genres, tackles difficult topics and explores alternative avenues of collaboration between art, politics and society. Some even call him an opera activist. He has garnered acclaim for works brought to stages across Europe, including Berlin, Brussels and The Hague. His latest undertaking is the premiere of the opera Dark at the Warsaw Uprising Museum. And Joining me right now is Christian Lada. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So I would like to start with the opera Dark, which premiered on August 1st at the Warsaw Uprising Museum. Tell us more about it, because it is not a conventional opera. It's far from being conventional, mm -hmm. that's true. Um, it's a very interdisciplinary project in which I try to bring opera together with theater, dance, visual arts, and tell a um, rather complex story. It's a story of three women. They live in different moments in the history, in different places in the world. They never met in real, but they talk to each other regularly in their dreams. One of them uh, participated in the Polish Warsaw Uprising events. Uh, the other two, not really. Um, the second protagonist is a uh, granddaughter of, um, of the uh, Polish Uprising uh, veteran. And the third protagonist is Jean d'Arc, the French national heroine. Mm -hmm. So what do they have in common? Why, why did you choose these three stories? Um, one year ago I received this invitation from the Polish Uprising, Warsaw Uprising Museum in Warsaw. And um, well, my first reaction as someone um, living abroad for quite some time already was this question, am I competent enough to talk about this topic? Am I allowed actually to talk about, uh, about something that specifically Polish after 20 years of not living here? Um, and after a few days, I realized that actually exactly that makes me question many things and makes me reflect on many, many issues related to mm -hmm. being Polish while living abroad, being Polish while uh, working in such an international uh, field like opera. Well, that's very, I'm going to interrupt you. It's very interesting because I have lived outside of Poland for also for many, many years. But whenever that topic came up, I actually felt obliged to talk about it. Even though I did not feel worthy of it, I felt like I'm the one, I sh it's in my roots, I should talk about it. Uh, that's exactly what I feel. Mm -hmm. um, I think you, you, you put, uh, put the finger mm -hmm. exactly where, uh, w where the pain of the situation mm -hmm. is as well. Because very often um, one needs to put aside our own personal opinions and represent right. whatever it means. And uh, whenever something terrible happens in Poland, you have to explain. Whenever something right. wonderful happens in Poland, you have to be proud of it. So uh, it's, it's, it's always tricky to find a balance. I think I, in the meantime, I, I, I learned to do it. Um, I must say, when I, when I left Poland, I had the feeling it's behind me. I'm like, I had the feeling I studied in Amsterdam, then I moved to Brussels. I started to work internationally. Um, Polish is not the, the first language that I speak during the day. It would be either German or English or Dutch. Um, but then somehow you realize that this, let's call it Polishness, it's like, like, like a box that you hide down there deep inside you and then it gets open in the least uh, expected moments. And then you have to cope with this, with these emotions getting out of this Pandora box. Now, when I read about you, um, it was interesting for me to read that many asked you what does it mean to be Polish? And you had trouble answering that at the beginning. That, that, that's true, because, yeah, because what does it mean to, mm -hmm. to be Polish without going into, into, like sliding into the stereotypes? And I must say to some extent, uh, the event, Warsaw Rising, is an event that explains a lot what does it mean to be Polish. This, 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 uh, giant uh, level of uh, emotionality, conviction, idealism involved in this I think, ex as well. I think one can explain a lot of our national traits. Based but would you say event. when working on this project you, you had an answer to that uh, question? I think I had more questions mm -hmm. because I, I realized very quickly, I, I, I thought okay it's, it's, it's only me having these weird questions or questions that I cannot always answer with uh, 
with kind of certainty that, okay, this is my answer to this question. But very quickly I discovered that other people that I invited to collaborate on this project, might it be actresses, singers, musicians, that they, they ask the same questions. And from all of a sudden we realized that there is something in our generation. Um, I think that the general question is like, are we allowed to rethink this idea of what does it mean to be Polish? Um, I think we, we met uh, as well in, all together in this opinion that, um, that to some extent for the last year there was only one part of Polish society that was so to say allowed to ask this question. Okay. And nowadays we have the feeling that actually maybe we can, we can reopen this question and, and, and look at this as well from other perspectives. It's true and also we represent different styles, different lives and each one of us um, we ask ourselves this question and we have different answers because of where we are in our lives. So that's, that's very interesting. Now, um, you mostly create abroad. However, you are equally respected in Poland as outside of it. Would you say that outside of Poland, is it easier to create um, the art that you are creating? Um, are you more inspired outside of Poland? Are you more free to create there? I wouldn't say that. I, I, I think Poland nowadays is a place where many exciting things are happening in the arts and it's a place where uh, many talented artists creators are based um, i studied abroad i started to work abroad so i started to build my uh, career path abroad so it, it was a kind of organic choice mm -hmm. to to stay there um, i'm always happy to come back to uh, to poland especially to warsaw which is my hometown I'm always happy to work here. Um, working abroad, well, yes, to some extent when it comes to, uh, to the opera field. I would say opera field abroad is maybe a bit more um, diverse. I think in Poland we are still somehow facing the stereotype that opera is something um, only for a certain group of the society, okay. right? Something very exclusive, something maybe for for the older generations. Right. Um, so what I what I do with a lot of passion and joy is to show that it can be differently, as we did this year. And uh, is it working? Would you say? I was really touched to see during the premiere um, of Dark in, in 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 the Warsaw Rising Museum within the audience on the one hand very noble historians and on the other hand uh, queer teenagers and on yet another side of the audience people that came because they are interested in music and not necessarily classical music mm -hmm. just in music in the widest and broadest sense and that's exactly what I would like to achieve to establish opera as something that can unite different audience groups and not divide them. It's very interesting. Now, would you say that you're taking a risk while doing that by mixing all the genres, the musical genres? I mean, is this your goal to do it and to, to appeal to all the different people that are watching you? Uh, for sure. I mean, if you don't take a risk, why to bother making arts at all? Um, and I think this is the excitement of, uh, of being an artist, that we, we always take a risk to some extent. Mm -hmm. Now, um, in one interview you said that opera reaches a specific audience that is only 3%. Yes. Now, do you think that by your approach to the, to the opera, to, to art, do you think that 3% can actually grow? I mean, is it possible? I would like to believe so. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, I, I, I do see that, um, especially for this kind of projects, like outdoor projects, site-specific operas, um, many different um, audience groups are uh, attracted to this okay. kind of projects. And, and I must say the, 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 the classical um, opera houses, they still serve um, a small part of the society. However, and this is equally important for me, uh, this part of the society is very often deciding or making decisions about the rest of us. So I think it's as well very, very important target mm -hmm. group. So I, I think I wouldn't like to lose the first one, so this uh, happy 3% to, um, to the other ones, but I do believe that it's exciting to bring them together and see what will happen. Now, is it true that you start your day by browsing um, internet, you read newspapers, you, you oh, like yes. to know what is happening in the world when it comes to politics? I'm like, this week I'm on my news diet. Like every <laughs> now and then I have to go on the news diet, otherwise I go crazy. So yes, because I'm, I'm, I'm based in uh, Belgium, I used to study in the Netherlands, and of course I'm always interested what is happening in Poland, I um, curate one festival in Germany, so only based on this four mm -hmm. countries and four different languages, it requires reading news in uh, different languages. I'm fascinated to some extent how different 
nations, different languages, different um, countries see the same events and how different mm -hmm. you can um, narrate about it. I think that's as well how I learned that history is yet uh, but, but a garden that you can choose your own path through and, and, and it looks very differently. So yes, I, I must say my breakfasts are sometimes very <laughs> Very long. Because but but do you get inspired freedom. by these? I'm not saying by politics, certain events, but but perhaps by what is happening in the world when it comes to your work. Where do you get your inspiration? I'm, I, I do get inspired. Well, I, I would say there are three phases. It's like that. There is always like several weeks that I'm getting under them. I'm getting very inspired. Then I'm getting in increasingly more and more worried. Mm -hmm. And then there's a the moment that I have to put myself on a diet, like this week. And it's like, okay, I don't listen to any news. I don't read any news. And then, then after some days, I start. Uh, I start missing it and mm -hmm. I must say I, I like as well to concentrate on how language can express uh, certain events or feelings and, and this is fascinating when you compare different languages operating and describing the same event yes. or the same person yet in a very different way. This inspires me a lot, how we narrate our reality, how we describe our feelings and what kind of metaphors we create in language to communicate what mm -hmm. we want to say. Well I have to say I think it's addictive. In my, in my example, you know I, would, well. I think I would I go on imagine. vacation, I don't want to read it, but then I feel worried. I don't know what is happening, so I have to get on that phone and read it. Um, but when it comes to inspiration, you, um, I do want to follow on that, because you get inspired, the story inspires you, and how does the process look like? Do you have to close yourself in a, in a house outside of the city mm. and think of it, or you just act? I wish I could. It's usually, you know, like all these projects, they are never happening in a vacuum. They always happen at the same time as other things. Um, and next to my uh, stage directing work, I curate a, a festival in Germany um, that will open, by the way, in two weeks. It's called Rutzienale. Um, so it's always, it's always something else happening in the background. My process is I always have a very quick, intuitive response to mm -hmm. something. So. When this particular invitation came to, to stage an opera for the 80th anniversary of Warsaw Rising, um, I wrote down the first version of the script within a few hours. Oh, wow. And it was really like, mm -hmm. you listen to, I, I call it, you listen to your guts, right? And it comes from your guts to your heart, and it, it does not even pass through your brain. It's just like you write it down. I must say 95% of what I wrote back then the audience saw it on the stage. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really like very, very, very intuitive ideas, including who will perform on stage, who will be these people, without knowing whether they are available or not. You just put it well, down. That's the definition of a true artist, I would say. Yes. Speaking, yeah. acting from your from your yeah. heart. And then, and then um, after this, this is a very quick, very intuitive process. And then, a lot of time, um, it takes a lot of time to make it happen. To, to rethink, okay, what do I need? Who do I need? What are the resources? Uh, how to then plan And bureaucracy it. enters, I guess. Yes, <laughs> and I must say I love uh, to be very specific about it. I spend a lot of time preparing things on paper. Um, many people are surprised how quickly I usually rehearse, but it's because when I start rehearsing, I know usually very well what I want to achieve. So we spoke about Dark that had um, its premiere on August 1st in the Warsaw Uprising. Now, can our audience see that opera somewhere else? Yes. Um, as from the 1st of October this mm -hmm. year, this opera will be available on a streaming platform called Opera Vision. It's available all around the world for free. Uh, I'm really excited about it, especially for the composers that we work with. So Rafał Ryterski, Tony Kirożynek, Dobrawa Czocher, Wojtek Błażejczyk. Mm, you know, music is such a, um, such a um, delicate thing. Uh, you know, we perform it a few times, some people heard it, and then if you don't record it, well, I cannot describe in words. True, and it's also universal, doesn't exactly. matter where you are yeah. in the world. Now, when it comes to your next projects, can you give us some insights on what you're working on? Yes, um, actually tomorrow I will travel to Germany, to Essen, where I start rehearsing to my next project called uh, uh, The Evening Magic. It's a project when I bring together choral pieces by Austrian composer Bruckner, together with uh, songs by Björk. And what combines these two um, very distinct music um, um, genres uh, is the theme of, uh, of the nature and our human relationships to the nature. Sounds amazing. Christian, thank you very much for joining us. All the best to you. 
Thanks and thank you for joining TVP World. See you next time. Thanks. See you. And thank you for watching us. Stay with us for more news and comments.